they are somewhat so similar right the same stone wash look to them you know, all around obviously the right p801 is going to be a little bit longer all right we got the Kershaw leak also which is like an old metal exposed design as well I want to tell you this guy has seen a ton and I mean a ton of pocket time this guy has probably been in my pocket the longest out of all the knives cut through the whole box it was actually two tvs two different boxes and this guy did that you know no issues the entire time cut through that box like it was butter right and even to this point it's still holding an edge like it's nobody's business so is the CJRB Pyrite, is this guy right here still a budget king this year, right? We're going to be answering that very question. You saw the title, you saw the thumbnail, so let's just jump right into it. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Miguel, and today we're going to be reviewing this guy right here, the CJRB Pyrite. This is an awesome EDC. This guy has seen so much pocket time. You guys have no idea. I've been EDCing this guy for a couple of months now, so I definitely have some substantial feedback to provide you guys with. So I had the opportunity to unbox this guy on the channel a little while back. If you haven't seen the unboxing video, make sure to check it out. But this is, I want to say, one of the most fidgety uh, knives out in the market right now. So uh, just a quick summary right here. You have a button deployment, right? That's very nice. You can uh, button deploy and also close your knife, close the blade. Uh, thumb deployment right here also, right? So let's see. Thumb deployment, right? You can do that all day, every day. And you got a reverse right reverse deployment also which probably is my favorite if i'm being honest uh of course as long as your index finger doesn't get in the way right boom look at that so what are we dealing with uh this guy here let's uh, do some quick uh measurements on this guy the overall length is going to be around i want to say seven and three quarters uh nope i like seven and a half seven and a half a little bit under right maybe like uh, seven and three eighths as a total length as far as the blade total blade length is going to be around three and a quarter the actual cutting edge is going to be right around under three inches and then the handle is going to be right at four and four and a quarter right there so what are we dealing with on this guy so we're dealing with a ar rpm9 steel on the blade which from what i've uh, researched is a very nice uh budget but still solid uh steel from cjrb uh this is a cjrb knife of course so we have a drop point uh blade style on this guy it is stone wash as you can see the whole knife is actually stone washed and it just gives you the whole exposed metal look to it this guy has some g10 options and black and some other colors but i just had to get this guy in the old exposed metal uh aesthetics because to me it just uh, it definitely scratches that itch right there there's some knives that i like with g10 there's some knives that i like with micarta but man when they give me the option to get an old metal knife uh, i'm gonna go for it i'm definitely gonna go for it and that is exactly what i did with this guy just like i mentioned on the last video talking about the reich p801 i feel like these two are like brothers from another mother right because look at them right they are somewhat so similar right the same stone wash look to them you know, all around obviously the reich p801 is gonna be a little bit longer right we got the Kershaw leak also which is like an old metal exposed design as well so very very comparable knife right there as far as the aesthetic goes right uh, obviously the Reich is gonna be a little bit longer the leak is gonna be a little bit shorter right but yeah this uh, these are the three musketeers as far as the old exposed metal in my collection and I love every single one of them uh, probably equally if I had to choose one over the other I probably have a very hard time but you guys get the idea let's continue doing some size comparisons here let's do the paramilitary 2 right there that's going to be a much longer knife and wider too the paramilitary or pair 3 sorry pair 3 uh, definitely more comparable to the pair 3 uh, as far as length goes right they are about the same uh, the pm2 is going to be a little bit of a longer knife let's see how it compares to the uh smock spider coast smock yeah this guy's definitely gonna be a little bit longer right as you can see but just as wide right just as wide all right let's check here next to the denko brothers right there is the shark's foot blade a denko ad 20.5 and here's the clip point blade right there so you can see uh the pyrite is just a little bit smaller in length uh obviously the demcos are going to be a little bit wider too just because of this pointy 
section right here but again just giving you an idea of course that's what this whole comparison portion of the review is all about so if you own any of these knives or these knives are very common very popular at least it kind of gives you an idea kind of where the um pyrite ranks here it is next to the senka brothers that is the senka saxi here is the Senka Crawley, right? The Crawley is gonna be a much longer knife, but the blade is gonna be very, very similar, right? Uh, if it wasn't because of the sharpening choil being a little bit more pronounced on the pyrite, uh, that blade uh, design will be very, very similar. Uh, of course, the Saxi, right, just has a much wider blade right there, as you can see. Now we're talking here with the Rat Model 1. This guy's gonna be huge compared to the pyrite. Checking it out here next to the next to the rap model 2 the rap model 2 obviously is a smaller brother right so it's uh somewhat more comparable to the rap model 2 than it is to the rap model 1 if i'm being honest right there you guys be the judge of that let's do some quick carry profiles here right next to the rap model 1 the rap model 1 is obviously going to be a much uh thicker knife right there as you can see the rap model 2 is more comparable i want to say still a little bit still a little bit wider a little bit thicker right than the pyrite and next to the saxi saxi is going to be thicker of course no doubt about that same deal here with the crawley yeah the crawley is still going to be a little bit thicker next to the ad 20.5 very comparable to the ad 20.5 this version here with the uh gravery scales all right pair of three here we go pair of three a little bit thicker just by by hair probably and last but not least the pm2 pm2 also a little bit uh thicker right there as you can see all right so what does it look like when it's on in your pocket what is the length and height in the pocket what does that look like here it is next to the paramilitary two the pair of three obviously the spider coat knives with the spidey hole are going to be much wider knives clearly all right let me put in the uh swap in the smoke Bruh. the smoke let me add in the smoke right there so you guys can see the spider coast mock is maybe comparable right on the width right there definitely more comparable to the pyrite than the pm2 or pair of three right here are the demco 80 20.5 brothers right these are also going to be a little bit wider because of how much the blade sticks out from the actual handle next here to the senka brothers the senka saxi and senka crawley there you have it right definitely more comparable to the crawley than it is to the saxi no doubt about that the ontario rap model one and ontario Ontario Rap Model 2. Uh, yeah, the Ontario Rap Model 1 is definitely going to be much wider, right? And the Rap Model 2 is a lot a little slimmer for sure. So it's going to be somewhere in between there, as you can see. And last but not least, for consistency purposes, there you have it, right? There is the Kershaw Leak, right? And the Reich P801. So those are very, very comparable. Probably around the same width on all three of them. Okay, going back to the action again on this guy, this thing fires like crazy. Like, just, just hear it right and it's very very fidgety and it doesn't take a lot for the blade to come back and shut close right it's very drop shoddy say what it's very drop chuddy 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 it's very drop chuddy as you can see right uh definitely closes very nicely on its own and you got multiple deployment options right uh so as far as that goes i want to say definitely it is very comparable to the saxi for example you got uh button deployment on this one you got thumb and reverse flick right so you could do all of those with the saxi same story with the crawley right so uh very similar fidgetability right there this could be a whole separate video on fidgety knives i want to say definitely an edge over the savivi elementum button lock because on the button lock you only have the button as the only deployment option so there's only a limit to fidgetability right there i know knives or tools or <laughs> somebody in the comment is gonna go off saying you know why why does it matter for a knife to be fidgety well for a a lot of edc guys the fidgety factor definitely plays uh, a lot into the knife that you decide to carry so again just want to give you some some quick thoughts right there on button locks since we're here let's do a quick hardware check on this guy by the way guys the tools that i use are very affordable they are linked down below in the description uh, check them out they're part of the strabido uh, set and they're very very useful for any kind of scenario you may have anything that you need to take apart or put back together so check out the links down below uh, their affiliate links they help out the channel at no extra cost to you so let's do a quick hardware check on this guy. I want to guess probably dealing with T6 on the frame there, probably a T8 on the pivot, and probably T6 on the um, uh, pocket clip as well. So let's test to see if that is the case. All right, here we go. Yeah, that is definitely a T6 right there on the frame. Let's check the other side. Yeah, that is T6. All right, T6 pocket clip screws. 
right t6 yep by the way i like that these are recess uh pocket clip screws right there so that's very nice um that was one of the things that i pointed out with the reich right that they were not recessed on the reich whereas they are recessed on the pyrite right there's a clear difference right there you guys can see it with your own eyes and as far as the pivot here we go right it should be a ta boom there it is right and you have the same uh pivot screw on both ends so you will need two um different drills two different drills what the hell all right so you will need two different screwdrivers in order to tighten or loosen this guy but yeah t8 is going to do the trick right there but well, there you have it guys so pivot is t8 everything else is t6 just a quick blade stock thickness on this guy on the thickest portion this guy's gonna be 0 0.10 all right 0 0.10 and on the let's see uh pointiest section it should be or it's gonna be 0 0.02 inches on the very point right there on the very tip all right let's check the weight really quick on this guy for comparison purposes right here's the leak the leak is going to be 3.3 ounces here is the reich p801 check out the review on this guy if you haven't already in the channel this guy comes in at 4.1 ounces definitely a little bit uh, heavier than the other knives and here is the weight on the pyrite so this guy is 3.6 so not too bad still gives you a good solid you know weight to it definitely gonna be a little bit heavier than a g10 on my carter handle obviously it's all metal design but you know definitely not as heavy as the rake but in any event you know uh, me personally i like a knife that has some substantial weight to it right so i don't mind that at all but you guys be the judge of that let's try it once again for scientific purposes there it is 3.6 uh, ounces so let me tell you guys about this guy what has the experience been over the last few weeks edc and this guy i gotta tell you it's been months now it's been months since i've had this knife and uh, i want to tell you this guy has seen a ton and i mean a ton of pocket time this guy has probably been in my pocket the longest out of all the knives there was a point where i just threw this knife in my pocket for weeks on end and i, I wasn't even thinking about any other knife so if that doesn't tell you something i don't know what does I, I i had to i had to actually force myself to get this guy out of my pocket and then put something else in my rotation. I, I forgot about my rotation altogether when I was EDC and this guy, and uh, I just didn't want to let go. It was just so good of an EDC, I did not want to let it go. Uh, and uh, during the time I've been EDC and this guy over and over again, <laughs> this is one of those knives that not only does it get the job done, right, but it's just so, so fidgety and satisfying, right? This is money well spent right here. Uh, check the links below in the description, by the way, there are affiliate links that do help out the channel and no extra cost to you, but I want to say this. This guy's gonna be somewhere around the 50 55 dollar ballpark right and for that price i mean you are getting a very solid uh edc to say the least right so what do we got going on here we have a drop point blade like i mentioned earlier right you got some nice jimping going on up here which is very 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 nice uh, a very good sharpening choil there as well right uh something to keep in mind as well as far as the air goes go right this guy fits completely in my hand with plenty of handles still left on the other end i have average hands not too big not too small but as you can see i'm able to comfortably get a good grip on this guy with no issues uh just like i mentioned on the reich p801 review uh the only thing to keep in mind is you may find this knife a little bit slippery right if you're wearing gloves or what have you if not being careful or if you're like me with uh butterfingers all the time uh because there isn't a pattern or anything printed on the actual handles it's just this plain stone wash finish you, you you know it may slip out of the hand here and there right so just be careful with that make sure you don't drop it while it's open yeah definitely don't do that right be careful with that uh probably be my only grab if anything would have loved to see some sort of design on the handle some along those lines but i mean the way it is i ain't complaining i like it the way it is so uh not really something that would be a deal breaker for me of course i know some people were looking forward to this doing the paper cutting test so here we are let's quickly check how much of an edge uh, this guy has retained over time even after being edc for a long long time now so here we go without further ado little bit of a tear on that one right there so still getting some decent cuts in all right might be time for it to be resharpened a bit all right you guys let me know on a scale from one to ten you guys let me know in the comments right if this guy needs if this guy needs to be touched up with a uh, a nice bladed edge but you can see you still can get some cuts it just depends on the angle
so this guy obviously is a button lock so we got button deployment all day every day we got thumb deployment right and it's very smooth and uh, also reverse flick like i mentioned earlier probably my favorite is the reverse flick no questions asked um this guy is probably a little bit lighter than the uh reich because it is milled right so you can count as you can see uh, actually a little bit filthy there's so much pocket lint going on in there it's a little embarrassing that just tells you how much i have carried this guy over the last couple of months but yeah it's certainly milled in the inside no doubt about that that helps with the weight a little bit explains why it was lighter than the reich p801 so something to keep in mind there the spacers are nice and solid right some solid spacers right there for sure pocket clip uh yeah this guy is very deep carry no doubt about that right just like i mentioned on the unboxing right when you put this guy in the pocket there's no concern about any portion of the pocket sticking out as a matter of fact it is so deep carry that a portion of the pocket clip actually stands higher or taller than the end of the knife right there right uh since we're here check out the blade alignment right there that thing is mac in the middle and again i've been edcing this guy for a long long time now and still dead center dead center right there now as far as the blade right how strong how solid is the blade i want to say that thing is not going anywhere that is a solid uh 9.9 .9 out of 10 right there right that is very very solid uh could it possibly fail all right uh, i mean unless you really try to you know throw it off a building or something that button lock is going to keep that blade uh, nice and locked in place let me see is there is there anything that i dislike about this knife honestly it's hard hard to picture anything that i would dislike about this knife if i'm being honest uh i would say i would have liked for the handles uh not to be a uh, mill i would have liked the extra weight it would have given me a little bit more substantial weight to it if you will but again that's just personal preference right some people swear by the weight so they like a knife to be as light as possible so you know uh there's a nice linear hole right here so if you're into that it comes out on both ends so you can put a nice linear attachment right there if you're into that honestly there's not a lot that i would complain about this knife for the price point for what it's done for me i'll probably put a, a, a you know an image right here of cutting through some cardboard so you guys can see uh you know we, we bought a tv a home <laughs> a while back and i just cut through the whole box it was actually two tvs two different boxes and this guy did that you know no issues the entire time cut through that box like it was butter right and even to this point it's still holding an edge like it's nobody's business all right all that being said uh, going back to the original question is the cjrb pyrite still the budget king this year and the answer is yes this is a awesome button lock edc knife right here it is a great budget king i believe these are discounted now to 49.99 it's about 50 dollars, so a little bit less than the original cost uh, these came out last year and there's now a new version of this guy with a worn cliff blade you definitely gotta check that one out and i can't wait to get one of those in the channel as well so the value is there uh, it's really not that much money for what you're getting and trust me you are going to love this thing so if you're considering buying one right now if this is in your list a wish list or what have you definitely got to pick yourself one of these guys because it is just an awesome awesome budget edc and that button lock just makes everything so much better so if you guys made it this far you guys are the real mvps i hope that i've been able to give you guys some substantial feedback any questions that you may happen to have about this knife and you want to ask me in the comments please don't hesitate i'll be answering all questions on the comments that i didn't get a chance to cover on the review i definitely don't want the review to be an hour long so i'm just giving you some quick rapid fire uh feedback impressions things that i've been able to observe over the last couple of weeks edc in this guy but yeah definitely feel free to reach out in the comments ask me any questions you may happen to have if there's anything in future uh videos that you would like to see right definitely let me know um you know we can definitely add that for future videos as well speaking of fidgety knives guys by the time you're done watching this video it's very possible that the sencock crawley this guy right here with four different deployment options is probably live in the channel so if that is the case i'll put a card right here that has been it i hope you guys have enjoyed the video thank you guys for watching and i'll see you all next time peace